welcome back guys. It's a sad day in this household because someone might have potentially died at the end of this episode and we're now in a period of mourning until Wednesday when we find out their true fate. But I'm not going to let that impact this episode because this episode was very, very entertaining from start to finish. There were twists, there were turns, there were so many interesting moments that I can't wait to dive in. But before we get started, I just want to thank you guys so much for the support. Um, the Traitors videos have been doing well, moderately well. They've been kind of building every single day. It's nice to see that there is a um, sort of demand and an interest in it and you guys are really engaging with it, which I love. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the, in the not in the description, in the comment section and just give me an idea of who's your fave, who's not your fave, who are you rooting for. There's so many different nuances to this game that everyone has really different opinions on who they like, who they're rooting for. So I'm really, really excited to see what you guys think. But without much further ado, Let's get straight into the video, shall we? So we were left on a cliffhanger regarding who died last night. And oh, sadly, it was Tracy that bit the dust. It was really, really sad to see her go. And I think that uh, the problem was is that she was an absolutely lovely person. She was very entertaining. But she's a bit of a shit clairvoyant, I won't lie. Oh my god, bless her. I don't know how clairvoyants work, right? But like, what I understand is that they're able to sense energy from people, not predict the future, but they're just good at reading people and making assumptions based on their readings. There was a video of her and the person who gets banished in this episode finding out who the traitors were and she had no clue who they were. And I just found that so funny because I, I'm, I don't believe in mystics and clairvoyance and fortune tellers and all that. But like, it just, it really just made me chuckle when she was like, yep, I didn't get a single one of them right. I thought it was other people. I was so wrong. <laughs> that just really, really made me chuckle. I won't lie. The next interesting thing at the breakfast table was Diane is now very suspicious of her own son. She cannot believe that she keeps getting saved every single night. She thought she'd get killed off very, very quickly. And because she keeps getting saved, now she's starting to become a little bit suspicious of her own son. This is a game that is so, so crazy that it's making a mother doubt her own son. The final interesting thing at the breakfast table was the fact that Zach called out Anthony or there was something dodgy going on where Ant where Zach basically said to Anthony, oh, I think the traitors are trying to like pin it on you because Tracy's dead. And Anthony was like, what? What are you on about? Tracy literally never had m her name in my mouth. No, my name in her mouth. And like, she, I think she voted for me once, which admittedly she did vote for Anthony once. But it just seemed like a really, really weird thing for Zach to say. And that kind of led us on to sort of the discussions afterwards in which um, Anthony was like, why Why did Zach say that? That I think he's a traitor because like, why, why was he saying that? Why was he saying like, oh, the traitors are trying to make you look suspicious? That just, it just, what, what's going on? I do think Zach is just playing a very, very poor game. He is not helping himself by making others think that he's not suspicious. And I just, I don't think he, yeah, like I said, I don't think he's playing the game very, very well. well. We'll talk more about Zach a little bit later on, but it just does seem like he's intentionally being a bit of a shit faithful. I don't know whether that's just my takeaway, but... He's so suspicious that he's not suspicious, if that makes sense. Like, he's so bad at this game that, like, if I was in the game, I'd be like, yeah, he's faithful. Like, there's no way this guy is going around murdering people at night. Like, come on. Let's be realistic. So, we moved very, very swiftly on to the mission in today's episode. And I gotta say, thoroughly, thoroughly entertained. It was actually quite sort of like gripping to watch. I really wasn't expecting it, but it was a challenge in which they were taken to a graveyard at night time. They had to dig up graves, break into crypts and smash into tombs. And 
essentially find money bags and put them in the wheelbarrow. There was also one shield, but I'll get onto that a little bit later. And they all had to run around, grab the money, bring it back to the wheelbarrow, but they had to avoid searchlights, which I thought was such a great idea. There were so many sort of interesting moments in this challenge and I gotta say I was on the edge of my seat watching like I really didn't expect it but I think this is the the best the best challenge we've had so far this series so um it started with Charlie being out within three seconds I don't think she lasted that long and it, it oh, I was it was quite funny to watch um but then Andrew just ran into a beam Molly got out Jazz got out and then Miles was like, yeah, fuck this. I'm just going to start being a lookout for everyone. And just stood there, was like, Diane, the, the searchlight's coming for you. Hide. <laughs> um, But no one was finding it helpful. And maybe it's because watching at home, I was like, oh, that's a really, really good idea. Having someone that's like, the searchlight's coming for you. Mind out. <laughs> Is actually quite a good idea but apparently none of the people playing were finding it particularly helpful and they were getting pissed off with miles because they were like dude dude you you were like uh, 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 uh. like you, you, come and help us come and help earn some money so i i think i think he got on people's nerves for that which was a bit of a shame because miles has been doing a very very good job of staying under the radar but I don't know, people are pissed off with him now, so could that lead to further suspicion? I don't know. Um, continuing the list of who was out, Charlotte got out, Ross was out, Jasmine then got the shield, Paul was then eliminated, Jasmine then got out, and then Diane, like the queen she is, was moving mad. She, I think she managed to bank like three grand. Deadass, I think she got three grand. It was crazy how much money she was bringing back. And then, unfortunately, she ran into a beam and she was out. So that was a shame. Uh, then Evie was eliminated. Then Miles was eliminated. Then Harry was eliminated. And then the last two people in, poetically, were Anthony and Zach. I, I, I found it so funny that those two were the last the last ones standing. Um, but they did a good job overall. They managed to get £7,250, which as far as I'm aware, puts their total at 47,000, no, 49,950, which is a lot of money, 50 grand already, we're already at 50 grand, we're only halfway through the show, that's a serious amount of money, and as far as I'm aware on this show, there's no, like with the mole, they rack up the big bucks and then they can lose it all immediately, like, I think in the first series um, that I watched, which was the first Netflix series, they, they had, like, 20, 28 grand, and someone bet 25 grand of that to get immunity, which was crazy. Um, so, yeah, on the whole, a really, really good challenge, a very entertaining challenge. Um, I do wish that they'd stop calling out the shields, because I think it would be really, really interesting to try and kill someone that has a shield and no one knew about. Um, but then again... It is what it is. It's not the end of the world. There are plenty more people to choose from. Um, and yeah, on the whole, just a very, very strong start. Um, I don't know why I said start. Just a very, very strong challenge in general. Um, there have been a, a few dull ones this series, but this one was actually very, very exciting to watch. i got to be honest. Guess what? It's time for another instalment of Anthony and Zach Hate Each Other. And on today's episode, we're talking about the conversation they had with Harry and Andrew. It's just tough because, like, we we know that Anthony and Zach are both faithful, which is so funny to me how they've chosen each other to hate. And I think what's so great about this is the fact that Harry was sitting there knowing full well that they're both faithful, but kind of riling it up a little bit he was kind of riling it up which i thought was very very entertaining um yeah they just they just started accusing each other again and then harry and andrew like i uh, want zach had left at this point um harry was like do you know what it's come down to the point where like he's either a traitor or he's just a shit faithful and like we don't need that on our team because like he's not he's not doing anything and he's he's actually causing more of a distraction for us than actually helping us, and Anthony was like, yeah, 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 and Andrew was like, yeah, 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 I, I agree, I agree, 
And then what was really interesting is that Zach was having a similar conversation with, I want to say it was Molly and someone else, but it might have just been Molly. And he was like, listen, I know Anthony and um, Harry are going to come for me in this round table. But if Andrew doesn't say anything and doesn't vote for me, that's suspicious because he's he's saying one thing to my face. And then when it comes to the round table, he's not voting for me and he's not acting on his beliefs. So like that's just suspicion. That's a traitor move, if I'm being honest. So now the suspicion is being cast on Andrew as well as Anthony. And Harry is just sitting there going, he 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 I'm getting away with it. Ooh. Um so yeah, that was that was today's instalment of Zach versus Anthony and that kind of led us nicely into the round table. This round table, my god, it was dramatic. These round tables are incredibly difficult to talk about purely because everyone's kind of accusing each other. So like I've tried to make sure that I've kept each accusation. There were a total of one, two, three, four, five different accusations and five different people got accused. And so it's, it's, I've had to group it by who got accused. So Charlie started by bringing up Ross and being like, look, you were the one that brought Johnny to the table. Johnny was wrong. So I'm now very suspicious of you because you kind of led that crusade to get Johnny out of here and you were wrong about it. So what's going on? And he basically said like, look, I made a massive, massive mistake. I really, really did believe he was a traitor. I'm a faithful, like I, I just made a mistake. I'm really sorry. Like I just, I just had it. I got it in my head and it wouldn't, it wouldn't leave my head because I, I started to like, everything I saw was like, that's a traitor move. That's a traitor move. I think Ross, Ross is doing well. He is, he, I don't think people believe he is a traitor, which is good because he's not. But also I feel like he's in a position where this Johnny mistake has kind of ruined his momentum a little bit. He might, he might not be able to get out of this as easy as he would have if Johnny was still here, potentially. So, a little bit of a sticky one for Ross. Harry brought up Zach, and Ross backed it, Miles backed it, and I thought that was very, very interesting. You've got two traitors and a faithful backing the claim against Zach, which I thought was interesting. And then you have Zach basically going, oh, all of my assumptions are basically based on logic. Like, they're, they're all based on logic. What logic? You're your accusations so far have been 100% wrong. There is no logic in this game. You can't look at someone and be like, oh yeah, they're moving shifty. They're a traitor because that's what you've done with Anthony and he's not a traitor. So you're just shooting yourself in the foot by saying it's all logic because it's not. What are you on about? Oh, honestly, I, I, I think Zach is one of my least favorite people on the show at the moment because everything, everything he says is just mildly frustrating to the point of, like, actually frustrating. And I, I've just had enough. Like, there's actually just... <sighs> yeah, so it's a long day watching him on TV, I've got to be honest. But Diane and Charlotte backed him up and basically were like, look, we think he's a faithful... He might be a bad faithful, but he is still a faithful nonetheless. So, like, let's not get rid of him because we're, we'll just be we'll just be ruining our chances once again. And this is when Diane and Charlotte brought up Andrew again, barking up the wrong tree. This is the third faithful this round table that has been brought up, and no one has got an inkling about who the actual traitors are and it's so funny so uh, diane's argument was basically that um he's acting similar to ash but that was ross's argument with johnny in the last episode and we saw how that turned out he was a faithful so maybe we shouldn't be comparing people's actions to ashes because people can have similar actions but not be a traitor as we learned from last episode so i just thought that was a bit of a bad point. Andrew tried to bring it back to Zach, saying that he thinks he's just a bad faithful, which I think is 100% accurate he is. Um, and then Jazz 
chimed in and was like, Andrew, I feel like you could be it because I feel a lack of contribution with you. When we're having conversations, you're never throwing out names. You're just sort of gathering intel and sort of learning what other people are thinking, which isn't helping the group in any way, shape or form. And then you go with the crowd at the end of the day. I think that's a very valid point. I think Andrew is a little bit of a sheep, if I'm being honest. Like, Brian was voted most sheepish, but I think, actually, the biggest sheep is Andrew, potentially. So, Jazz brought up the fact that Paul voted most popular, didn't die after the, the dungeon twist, which he was like, if I was a traitor, that would be exactly what I'd do. Why have you not been murdered? Because you're the most popular. Everyone here loves you. I'm so glad that Jazz is calling him out. Jazz is actually currently number one. He's incredible. He's so good. And like, the, the thing is, is that the traitors can't get rid of him. Because it's the same reason why Wilf and the traitors couldn't get rid of Maddie. Maddie was just accusing Wilf out of nowhere with no solid foundation for her accusation. Jazz has solid foundation for his accusation because he's right, but they can't get rid of him because then that looks suspicious. So it's a tricky one. I'll be interested to see what they do about Jazz. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about Jazz a little bit later on. But Paul started bringing up the fact that Jazz is a bit two-faced. He said one thing to Paul's face and then another thing to other people. And he said, Paul said an interesting thing that was like, oh, well, if Tracy was still here, she'd be able to back me up. And it almost sounded like, so you can't disagree with me because Tracy's not here. And it all, like, to me, it sounded like a brag of like, I killed her so that you'd have, you'd have no defense, which I thought was quite interesting. Very, very, very cool moment. I gotta be honest. Um, Jasmine brought up the fact that she doesn't think that Paul is a traitor and oh, it's tough. It's tough because the traitors are doing such a good job at this point where they're so well hidden that, like, they're just letting the faithfuls pick each other off. Jazz is the only one with an inkling, which is so funny to me. Well, Anthony also has an inkling, but as we'll learn in a second, Anthony was on the firing line. He was not having a good episode. Jasmine brought up the fact she thinks it's Anthony, and then as she finished her little, like, monologue, he just went, are you finished? And she went, sorry? <sighs> Anthony really didn't help himself there. I think it's a, I think it's a frustration for him because he's sitting there and he's like, "Look, I'm a, I'm a faithful. Why are you voting for me? What's going on? Because I know I'm a faithful, and you guys are all making a huge mistake." I think what was really interesting is that he he called out he called out Zach. Um, he also called out the people who aren't saying anyone's names. So, like, he didn't point fingers, but I know he was talking about Evie. I know he was talking about Charlie. Um, although Charlie pulled out Ross's name. But I know he's talking about Molly. There are quiet people in this group that have not said anything at this round table. I don't think Molly has ever spoken at a round table, which is crazy. That we're, we're on, like, the sixth one now. That's wild to me. But he's bringing up good points. If you vote me out, eight one down. Claudia made a point that they were seven one down at the start of the episode and he went eight one down and then Harry backed Anthony up and was like no I do believe he's a faithful and that's when the round table ended and we come to the vote. This voting was incredibly frustrating. If I was in that round table I would have voted for Zach because I, be I believe Anthony. Anthony's got a very 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 solid foundation I think for me. So Anthony voted for Zach, Evie voted for Anthony, Charlotte voted for Anthony, Paul voted for Jazz, Charlie voted for Ross, Jazz voted for Andrew, which I found weird because I would have thought Jazz would have voted for for Paul, but okay, we're gonna we're we're gonna move past that. Diane voted for Andrew, Harry voted for Zach, Zach voted for Anthony, Molly voted for Anthony, Miles voted for Anthony, Andrew voted for Zach. Jasmine voted for Anthony, Ross voted for Anthony. So, unfortunately, Anthony had to leave, but not before giving the best monologue I've ever seen to tell them they're a traitor. Oh, no, to tell them they're a faithful. He, 
it was the only thing he could have said was um like i i, I said what he should have said was this is such a great game it's just a shame you're playing it so poorly like oh just everything that he was saying was so cool and then he was like i have been and always have been a hundred percent faithful and then before he like usually that's when they go bye 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 and he just went eight one down remember that eight one down walked out <laughs> anthony what a great monologue big love to you man i i was really impressed with that i thought it was brilliant but sad to see him go i gotta be honest i really did like him i thought he was great and uh, i'm just i'm just sick of zach being in the game <laughs> i really wanted him to go this episode but i i also did call the fact that i thought anthony and tracy were going to leave this episode I, I think i said that in the last episode i don't know um but like i said to my friend before we started i was like i i think i think tracy and anthony are going home tonight and she was like really i think it's going to be tracy and like and uh zach and i was like nah it's going to be anthony because people trust zach more than they trust anthony and it's all based on like the oh you changed since i first met you like that's a load of rubbish how can you judge someone on whether they've changed or not harry hasn't changed paul hasn't changed miles hasn't changed and they're all traitors so it's not about whether you changed or not i would actually be more suspicious of people who haven't changed because that means that they're keeping up a facade potentially yeah it's frustrating it's frustrating the night was not over yet there's more to talk about so after the round table charlotte basically said this is not good enough jazz and paul had a chat and this was where the seed was dropped in jazz's brain because jazz was like how did you find out about all of this and paul was like harry told me and jazz in a confessional was like what harry the person who i told not to say anything to anyone that's odd i i have a feeling paul might have just accidentally dropped himself and harry in it and now they're gonna get found out so really <sighs> they've got to get rid of jazz or their game's done and it's just gonna be miles because that seed's been dropped in jazz's brain he's already convinced it's paul and now that harry's been telling paul what he's been saying that's strange right surely hmm very interesting interesting indeed um then jazz had a really um honest and open conversation about uh, like uh, something that rocked his family about his dad having a second family that was that was quite a quite a crazy quite crazy twist in the narrative i really wasn't expecting that um but i also appreciate how open and honest he was um jazz you're currently in the top three of my favorite people on this show was not expecting it i'll be honest because like you did nothing for the first couple of episodes but now you're starting to now you're starting to call paul out mad respect for you bro mad respect Ugh. mad respect the final part of this episode was you must kill in plain sight they had to they had to meet up outside or that they, they chose to meet up outside discuss who they were going to kill went inside they had to retrieve a book from the library open it up there was a goblet inside and they had to give someone a goblet and get them to sip from it and that would seal their fate <sighs> these motherfuckers could not find the book it took all three of them probably about 20 minutes searching for this book in the library everyone was walking past looking and going what the fuck are they doing in there and they finally found it and this is why i'm going to be on more in mourning on wednesday i'm going to be wearing all black if 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 this does happen i will be wearing all black for wednesday's review because i will be heartbroken and i will not be able to to watch on without a heavy heart but miles poured himself a drink of sparkling rosé and then went oh i actually don't like the sparkling one and diane went well i do let's swap and the last thing we saw this episode was her accepting the goblet surely surely there's got to be a twist here they can't they can't kill diane off they can't 
No, because I'll actually be gutted. I'll be so heartbroken. Yeah. After the fact that this episode's twist was, oh, Diane might be dead. Like, the cliffhanger for this, and she survived. <sighs> tough. It's tough. I'm I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm really hoping that Evie swoops in. It's like, oh, no, let me, let me taste it. Let me taste it. <sighs> tough one. Really, really tough one. Right. That's it for today. Thank you guys very, very much. It's with a heavy heart that I have to say goodbye. We're not getting a new Traitors episode until Wednesday now, which is crazy. And, um, tomorrow... There's going to be a video, Love Island. I'm going to be taking a look at the cast reluctantly. Love Island starts on Monday. There probably won't be a video on Monday. There will be a video on Tuesday. Um, but thank you guys very, very much for watching. And I will see you guys later. Keep on ranting. Bye now.